Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and Merry Christmas. I'm Pastor Julia Hayes. I'm one of the associate pastors here, and it is my joy to welcome you to this service of worship on Christmas Eve at The Vine, an online campus of Wrightsville United Methodist Church. We are so grateful that you are here with us today and that you are worshiping along with us as we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. We'd love to know that you're here with us, and so if you would, please take a moment and sign in. You can do that using the link that's in this video description, or you can scan the QR code that will appear on your screen in a few moments. There you can let us know that you're here with us and let us know how we can be praying for you in the coming weeks. Now I invite you to take a deep breath as we prepare our hearts for worship. Please join me now in our opening responsive prayer. I'll say some of the lines and you'll join in on the lines in bold that will be on your screen. Let's say this prayer together. To us, watchful and waiting, a gift has been slipped into our midst. A gift of peace to troubled souls. A gift of joy to sad hearts. A tiny child, gift of God. Open your hearts, raise your songs, give thanks to the giver, welcome the gift. I'm Pastor Julia Hayes, one of the associate pastors here, and this is my husband, Matt Hayes, who is also the pastor at Burgaw United Methodist Church. A reading from John chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and without Him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in Him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. He is a light that no darkness can extinguish.
please join me now as we go before God in prayer. Holy and loving God, you bring us such good news at Christmas. Your gifts are many and full of wonder. Peace, mercy, reconciliation from sin, light and life, healing. You love us so much that you come to us in a manger in the little town of Bethlehem and shine in our dark streets with everlasting light. You have taken flesh upon yourself, become one with us, one of us, so that we may be one with you. Surprising and gracious God, we are pleased to dwell with you too. Thank you for being our God and for choosing us as your people. Make us beacons of your justice and defenders of those for whom there is no room, the homeless and hungry, the unemployed and uninsured, the imprisoned and the victims of prejudice and persecution. And we pray for all those who are suffering in mind, body, and spirit. And we name them before you now, either aloud or in our hearts. Let there be joy in our world today. Joy that you have come to us again. Joy that all nations may rise and join the triumph of the skies. Joy that we know you and are found in you through Jesus, our Emmanuel. And now help us to mean what we say as we pray the prayer Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us, not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We're going to transition now into a time of reflection and giving. And I'd like to let you know today that a portion of all of our Christmas Eve offerings will go to support Nourish NC and Mother Hubbard's Covered, two organizations that help to feed the hungry right here in Wilmington. If you would like to make sure that your gift is included in this Christmas Eve offering, please note Christmas Eve offering in the memo line on a check or in the memo line in our online giving. Let us now continue to worship God.
Hello there, my name is Doug Lane. I'm senior pastor here at Wrightsville United Methodist Church and it's an honor and a privilege to be able to bring today's uh, proclamation to you. It, of course, uh, based on a scripture that is um, very important to uh, Christians around the world, it's the birth of Jesus, found in Luke chapter 2, starting in verse 1. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they'd heard and seen, as it had been told them. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Almighty and everlasting God, we thank you that you have sent a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Lord, bless us on this most holy of nights. Lord, may we receive the Christ child anew. In Jesus' name, amen. How can you begin to explain or describe or quantify what Christmas means in our lives? Norman Vincent Peale tells about two men who were standing on Fifth Avenue at 57th Street, New York City, during the Christmas rush, waiting for a red light. One of them was irritated by all the traffic. This town's totally disorganized, he growled. Look at this traffic. It's terrible. Something ought to be done about it. The other man was more philosophical. Thoughtfully, he countered, you know, it's rather astounding, the romance of it. There was this baby born of peasant parents in a little out-of-the-way place halfway around the world from here. The parents had no money or social standing, yet 2,000 years later, that little baby creates a traffic jam on Fifth Avenue, one of the most sophisticated streets in all the world. This irritates you. Instead, it ought to fascinate you. I agree. It should fascinate us. A baby born in an obscure village, his simple parents no more than refugees, and yet around the world, during this special season of the year, millions of people are affected by his birth. And why not? When we consider what really happened that first Christmas, we see why the whole world seems to be singing Christmas carols. What is it we believe about Christmas? What is at the heart of it all? In our gospel text, Luke 2, 1 through 20, the baby Jesus is born in a stable, but later grows up to be a man. As an adult, he showed us the way to God through his life, his words, and his miracles. And so the magic of Christmas is not in the presence, but in his presence with us. But I want you to notice that when the shepherds were told of Jesus' birth, it was not enough for them to know about a child who was born the Messiah. What they had to do was go and have the experience for themselves. And once that had happened, they were forever changed and were able to worship and praise God. It's the same with us. It's not enough to just intellectually know about a baby who becomes a man. We've got to experience him. And when we do, our lives are fulfilled. 
This whole scenario was on God's mind from the very beginning of time when he went about creating the world and everything in it. God's desire for us was shalom. Yes, that's the word. It's, it's a Hebrew word, and it gets translated usually as peace, but it means so much more than what we tend to think of. A whole lot more, in fact. It means wholeness and flourishing and the interconnectedness of all things. It's about the way things ought to be. It means being in a right relationship with God, right relationship with each other, right relationship with all creation. But you know the story. Sin made a mess of things, disrupted the shalom, fractured the relationships, and up went the walls. Walls all around us, walls between us, walls within us, even walls between us and God. But God refused to leave the world a mess, all fractured and broken. God refused to have a world with so many walls, so many divisions, especially between us and Him. So what does God do? God enters into the mess, into the darkness, into the brokenness. God comes to be with us among all the walls and dispel the sin. God calls a people to be His covenant people, a light to the nations. Sometimes they live into this calling, oftentimes they don't. But God's intent is to pull the world back together again, break down the walls, restore the shalom, bring us peace. We spent the last month hearing Isaiah prophesy about it. He talks about a child who will be a light in the darkness, a Messiah, a Savior, who will come to draw the world back together, to draw people back to God, to usher in God's shalom, God's peace for all people, for all the nations, everywhere. He has a name, Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. We call him Jesus, which means God saves. And he has a face, the scrunched up, ruddy face of an infant, so helpless and vulnerable, born into straw and poverty to a teenage mom and her fiancé. And he's bringing in a kingdom with him, the one Isaiah speaks of in the line of David, Israel's greatest king. A kingdom of peace where righteousness and justice meet in peace or shalom. A peace that's not just the absence of conflict, but rather the presence of something. The presence of justice and beauty and goodness and wholeness. The presence of God's very spirit. A peace in which the walls come tumbling down and we can finally be at peace with God. Forgiven, put back into a right relationship. And we can experience now peace with one another, overcome our divisions, move toward one another in love and understanding. Even nations can beat their weapons into plowshares and stop warring against each other. This child that we celebrate tonight, the one who gnarls up traffic in places like Fifth Avenue in New York or military cutoff in Wilmington, he brings us this peace. He makes this peace which seems so impossible, possible. That's the phrase that the Swiss theologian Karl Barth called this event, the impossible possibility. A God who's able to do what we in our own striving and effort cannot do. This child who would grow up into a man, fully God and fully human, and who would lay down his life in a sacrifice of love, only to burst forth from the tomb three days later and be crowned Lord of all. Impossible possibility. And now the world can really be different. The Apostle Paul declares it this way in Ephesians, But now in Christ Jesus, you who are far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ, for he is our peace. In his flesh, he has made both groups into one, broken down the dividing wall that is the hostility between us. He's come to create one new humanity, thus making peace. No wonder the angels sang out on that first Christmas day, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, yes, on earth, peace among those whom he favors. And so tonight we sing with them, hail the heaven-born Prince of Peace, hail the Son of Righteousness, Light and life to all he brings, risen with healing in his wings. And also this, he rules the world. 
with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love. Wonders of his love and wonders of his love. And this child born in Bethlehem, a kingdom of peace has come. A kingdom of peace that's not yet here in completion, though. So the Holy Spirit's been poured out on us to join God in this work of peace that he's doing throughout the world. Well, maybe you're not there yet. Maybe you think this is a nice story, but I can't really get on board. It's not your story. Too many problems in this world to think that this plan might possibly be real or that you've got anything to do with it. I, I get that. I'm sympathetic. And so I wonder if you'd be willing to look at it from a different angle. I'm told that once there was a man who was skeptical about the birth of Christ and what the meaning of Christmas was all about. On the other hand, his wife was the opposite. She was very devout, very spiritual. Both of them and their children lived on a farm out in the country. And on one particular snowy Christmas Eve, the wife decided it was safe enough to take the children to the candlelight service at the little church nearby. And before they left in their pickup truck, she asked her husband if he'd like to come along, but he declined. Instead, he ridiculed the meaning of Christmas and stated that he was better off at home. Well, after his wife and children left, the husband looked out the window and saw a flock of geese which stood in his field. They looked cold. For some unknown reason, he had compassion on them and wanted to help the geese. Then he thought the barn would be a great place for them to stay. Inside there, it's dry. The geese could spend the night, try to stay warm. So he went outside and he opened the barn door and he waited. But nothing happened. The geese just stood around. Then he tried to shoo them in. That didn't work. Then he tried to chase them towards the barn. That only scared them, and they were scattered in every direction, every direction except the barn. Frustrated, the man said to himself, why don't they follow me? Can't they see that the barn is the only place where they can be dry and protected from the cold and the elements? And he thought to himself, if only I could become like one of them, then maybe I could save them. And he stood silently for a moment. As the words which he just said in his mind reverberated between his ears. And he said, if only I could become like one of them, then I could save them. He became quiet as he pondered the thought. In a strange sort of way, he began to understand why Christ had, had to come. And when his wife and children returned from that Christmas Eve service... What they found was a husband and a father who was now a believer in Jesus. Joy to the world. The Lord has come. Let earth receive her king. Let every heart prepare him room and heaven and nature sing. For what is impossible for us has now been made possible with God. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Pray with me. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for coming to be one of us, to show us the way, to save us from sin, to save us from ourselves, to save us from a broken world. Lord, help us to get on board with this plan of salvation that you have. Give us the courage not only to say yes to Jesus, but to invite others and to show them the way to salvation through your Son, Jesus our Lord. Amen. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory, Glory to, to God. God. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You created light out of darkness and brought forth life on earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. In the fullness of time, you gave your only Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Savior. And at his birth, the angels sang, Glory to you in the highest, and peace to your people on earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. As Mary and Joseph went from Galilee to Bethlehem and there found no room, so Jesus went from Galilee to Jerusalem and was despised and rejected. As in the poverty of a stable Jesus was born, so by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. As your word became flesh born of woman on that night long ago, so on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, he gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Wherever you are, I hope that uh, you're able to take... Uh, a piece of bread and uh, some appropriate liquid for this evening. And remember that the bread that we partake is a sharing in the body of Christ. And the cup of salvation for which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. I invite you now to share the elements with us.
God has come to us. And Jesus, making the impossible possible, bringing shalom where we couldn't do it ourselves, bringing salvation to the entire world, including you and me. Go forth this week, this year, the year to come, knowing that God wants shalom for your life and for everyone around you. In Jesus' name, amen.